What is up RC enthusiasts? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome to my channel and in this channel I like to do reviews, bashing videos, running videos, and some tutorials and builds. So hit that subscribe button if you're interested in those kind of things and join me in my fun and my crazy shenanigans with RCs. But anyway in this video I'm gonna go ahead and be talking about my lipo experience. Now I'm not a professional by any means, I'm just gonna walk you through how I take care of my lipos personally and how I've been able to have some lipos that are in this bag right here that are more than 10 years old and still work pretty great. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's talk about this. I wanna talk about the differences in lipos, sizes, and charging rates to safely charge and store these lipos. So let's go ahead and let's get into that. All right, so these are a couple of lipos I have. I chose these ones right here because they show a little bit of range. And I don't really have that many lipos. I don't have anything really over 4S. This is the only 4S's I have are for my quadcopters. But yeah, as you can tell right here, I have everything from a little one cell 700 milliamp hour right here to these two three cells right here i don't know why i put them in that order and there's these are all two cells right here these tiny little bats right here and these ones are all two cells and these even this one is a three cell lipo so what the cell counts mean oh yeah this one's a four cell like i mentioned earlier but the cell count means it's just how many cells are in there as you can tell this is just a single cell lipo so you can see that's one casing, that's only one cell. So these are three cell lipos right here. You can tell right there, there's three packs in there. So it looks like it has three of these sitting in there. See what I mean? So these are individual cells wrapped individually in here. And each cell produces 3.7 volts or 4.2 fully charged. And that's where they get their voltage ratings from right here. So you can see these 11.1 volt battery right here. That just means there's three cells that are 3.2 volts each in here or 3.4 or something like that. <laughs> like I said, I'm not a professional. I've just been messing with lipos for a while, so I know how to kind of keep them in good condition. So anyway, we're also going to talk about the differences in MAH right here. So you can see on my table, I have anything from a 2200 MAH. This one says 6200. These ones only say 260 mAh on them. So these are tiny little batteries. What that mAh rating means is that that's how much capacity the battery has to hold in power. So that's how much power this battery is holding inside of it. 6200 mAh worth of power in this one, which means the bigger the number you see on here usually means the longer the runtime you get with your RCs. But you have to take into consideration if you're flying RCs, the bigger the packs, the heavier the thing you're flying, and it possibly won't be a good combination. So for air stuff, there's a weight ratio that needs to be, you know, a sweet spot for that one. The ground vehicles, your RC crawlers, I know a lot of competition crawlers and stuff like to run on the smaller 2200s like this because they don't really need massive run times and stuff. But trail crawlers like me that like to hike long four or six miles with their crawlers on the ground and not carrying them. These are the batteries right here that we run 500 or 5,000s and 6,000s because they, they last a good hour usually. And obviously you can move up in the three cell right here, which is just more power. So when you go up from like a one cell, two cell, three cell, four cell, five cell, six cell, all of this is you're producing more power. It doesn't mean that the battery is going to last longer. It just all depends on the MAH. Like I said, this one right here is a 500 three cell. That one's a 2200 three cell. So that right there is going to last a lot longer than this three cell. And this 5,000 three cell right here is going to last a lot longer than these two. So I'm hoping I'm demonstrating this good enough. I'm not really a professional with speeches and stuff, but I'm just trying to show you a proper way to take care of these things. I haven't brought up actually the C rating. As you could see on some of these batteries, there's a C rating right there. It says 50 C rate on this one. This one says 50 C right here as well. That's just the discharge rate, like how powerful, how much discharge the battery can take or push out at one time so it'll actually push out a lot more power but you know it's give or take these ratings uh you know i don't know some companies like these kind of batteries you can take it with a grain of salt unless you're buying spectrum batteries or something maybe they're higher quality and stuff then you can take that a little bit more seriously but for these batteries they all say 50c on mine usually i have a 60c and a 25c right there they all seem to perform pretty well for me and I'm not really that picky. I don't need the highest of high. I'm not racing. I'm just bashing around. So these all work for me. Well, anyway, since I already have those taken care of and I talked about some of those little things about batteries, let's talk about battery charging. All right, guys. So now let's go ahead and get into battery charging. So the good 
Rule of thumb with battery charging for LiPos is charge at a 1C charge rate. And what that means is you charge your batteries at the milliamp hour rating right here. So you got a battery charger like this one that can charge at 16 amps. You don't want to charge a battery like this at 16 amps. Some batteries, yes, some batteries like these can accept up to a three times faster charge rate. But every time you do that, you have to remember, you're degrading your batteries faster whenever you charge faster and discharge faster. So whenever your batteries get hot and charge fast and discharge fast, you're always degrading that battery for sure. So if you want your batteries to last a lot longer, you're going to want to charge at a 1C charge rating. Keep your batteries cool the longer they last. And also make sure you're always storage charge. But we'll get into that right now. So I'll show you real quick what I'm talking about. So when you're charging a battery that says 700 milliamp hour, like this one, on your charger right here, when you're setting it up to charge, you're gonna wanna put your current right here to 0.7. See that right there, it's on 16 amps. You wanna put that at 0.7 to charge this. And that up there has, this one right here has to be on one cell, but my charger automatically detects that when I plug these in. But anyway, if it doesn't, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your settings on one cell and at 0.7 to charge a battery that's 700 milliamps. And when you have a battery that's a three cell, always make sure it's set to three cell or three S and since there's a 2200 mAh battery, you want to set the charging amps to 2.2 amps, and that is a 1C rating. Same thing when you go to 6.2, 2 cell, you want to set that to 2S and charge at 6.2 amps. So that, I'm pretty sure you're getting the trend here, that's a 1C charge rating when you're charging at the milliamp hour that this is showing you right here, and that's the amps you're charging it at right here. So that is how I've been charging most of my batteries. And yes, I'm guilty of charging them faster when I'm gonna get more runs and stuff. But now I'll show you batteries that have done that too, that have puffed on me, and batteries that you wanna be really cautious of, or potentially even just completely discharge and disposing of them properly because they are really unsafe when they get to this condition. So yeah, guys, here's a one bad case scenario right here. I'm not sure if you can tell. Let me see if I can focus this. You can tell that battery doesn't look flat, it looks flat on this side, but kind of ballooned on this side. Well, yeah, this battery actually came to me this way. And this was part of a two pack from a, I think it was a 12428 WL toys and came with two batteries. Well, here's what the battery is supposed to look like. Do you guys see the difference now? It like puffed up and looks bigger than this battery, right? But they're the same battery as you can tell right here. But one of them is more puffed up than the other. So this battery is still good. It even charges good and it's balanced well. This one right here was completely out of whack when I got it. And it came this way. So when you get batteries that are already like this out the box, just because it's new, don't think that you'll be fine running this. This is still unsafe. And you should toss this. Not literally toss that though, because it'll probably explode. So safely dispose of them. Here's another bad battery I had for one of my boats. I can't show you exactly what happened to it because obviously... It looks normal, right? Look at it, it doesn't even look puffed or anything, so it still looks like it could be a good battery. If I plug it into my cell checker right here. Upside down, of course. As you can tell, it's registering two cells at 3.6 volts each. It is a three cell battery. So one cell is completely dead. So that is a bad battery as well. Now some people out there are talented enough to salvage some batteries and you could actually take this apart and turn it into a two cell battery. But I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not professional like that and I don't want any of you guys to try that if you're not professional at messing with electrical stuff like this because this could be really dangerous. Just taking this battery apart could cause this battery to go and combust on you and it'll be a bad day. Here's another one out of a short course truck that you could totally tell is puffed. This one I've already completely discharged so it's safe because there's no more voltage in here. So if, if I broke this open, it would probably just smoke or something, but it wouldn't be too intense because there's no more energy stored in here. And here's another case of a LiPo that you might want to look out for. So after you're done running, let's say you're running short course trucks or bashers and your battery decides to fling out of the vehicle, always inspect your battery after that happens because you see this battery right here, it looks fine, right? Oh, until you look right there, look at that. It's even ripped into the casing. It looks like if anything touches that, that battery will go. So you gotta be careful for those kind of things. But other than that, my experience with LiPos so far has been mostly positive and not as scary and as dangerous as most people want you to think. 
But don't sit there and think that I'm trying to belittle all those people talking about how dangerous lipos are because they definitely are dangerous if you do not take care of them. And last but not least, when you're done playing with your lipos, that's why you want to have something like this pretty much with you because it can check your battery levels. You always want to have your batteries at storage voltage. So let me plug this battery in here. So you could tell right there, 3.79, 3.79. So it's pretty close to 3.8 and that's where I store my batteries anywhere from 3.79 to 3.82. It's fine with me, but 3.8 is pretty much your storage voltage. This battery is brand new, so I'm still gonna be using this every other day. So it's not too detrimental to be exactly at 3.8 unless you plan on keeping this battery in storage for like a month or two. Then after that, I would recommend check those batteries to top, top them off real quick just in case the voltage has gone down if you are storing them and just planning to keep them in storage. But if you're gonna run them a lot like me, this is fine right here. But always good to store your batteries at a safe voltage and not fully charged for days or fully depleted for days because that will ruin your battery a lot faster. Well, all right guys, there you go. I hope that helped you guys in realizing that lipos aren't as dangerous as some people like to make them seem. And I know they are scary and stuff can happen. That's why you gotta be really careful. And like I tell people all the time, don't do as I do, do as I say, and be safe with your lipos and don't leave them laying around like this on your table because you might not come back home to a hobby room. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, more than 15 years of experience with lipos. I've only had one catch fire inside my RC boat, which is a very old lipo that just needed to go anyway. I don't know why I still ran it, but that's the dangers of running older lipos. Don't use them in high powered rigs. But anyway, yeah, other than that, I haven't had a lipo go in flames on me on a charger or anything like that because I do sit there and watch my charger as it charges and I always charge these batteries at 1C rating whenever I can. Obviously sometimes you want to charge your batteries faster and some batteries can handle that so you might want to do that but always keep an eye out on that charger because it happens quick and when it does you're gonna hate lipos even more. <laughs> well alright guys as always thanks for watching and I always appreciate all the support all you RC enthusiasts have out there for me. I really feel the love and it's awesome. So you guys have fun out there and be safe and go run that RC.